Welcome to the Laws That Matter, everyone. I'm Carissa Kranz. Thank you for joining me for another week. Today we have a great lineup and some very important subject matter. But first, we're going to start with um, a very important and horrific story, which I'm sure many of you heard already. Uh, this show is dedicated to Reagan Russell, who is an animal activist who was peacefully protesting outside a pig slaughterhouse before a semi-truck carrying pigs to slaughter hit her and dragged her to her death. The question still remains whether or not this is intentional or not, but let's get right to it. We have a uh, guest with us, another attorney, Camille Labchek. Um, hi, Camille. How are you? Thanks for joining us. Hi, Carissa. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. Yeah, so I know you've been making the circuit here with um, this topic and this subject matter. So tell us a little bit about, um, there's a bill, right? There's a bill that is at issue here that is being considered in the big scheme of things? With That's the, right. So, yeah, tell us yeah, about the bill. Sure, so Ontario is a province in Canada, it's the largest province, has uh, some of the largest farms in the country. And uh, also has a very large farm lobby and farmers who want to hide animal cruelty on farms to make sure that the public doesn't get a taste of what they're doing. So for quite some time, they've been lobbying for legislation that would make it an offense to do uh, an undercover expose through a whistleblower employee of a farm or a slaughterhouse. And the bill would also make it illegal to do things that safe movement activists do at vigils. So Regan Russell was involved in the safe movement. Um, on the day that she was killed, she was at a safe movement vigil. And what they do is they greet trucks full of pigs or other animals who are on their way to slaughter. Uh, they stop the trucks for about two minutes and they provide water to those animals if they're thirsty or in distress. In Canada, there's no limit on transporting animals, even in extreme sweltering temperatures like we were experiencing the day that she died. And uh, then the trucks go back into the slaughterhouse um, after the activists are able to document and expose the condition of those animals. So the bill, unfortunately, also that, that is already passed now. And, and then, yeah, so that's what I was going to say. So this is Bill 156. This is in Canada. And you're saying it's already passed, and it, but it's not in effect. So when did it pass? It passed on Wednesday and two days later, unfortunately, Regan was killed. Right. So, I mean, that is a little suspicious. She was standing there outside the slaughterhouse holding a sign and the bill is basically making it criminal to stand in the way of a truck taking pigs to slaughter. So in essence, she's been criminalized, but yet she was the one that was murdered or killed. We don't know what happened. It's being, it's under investigation. It's under investigation and we do hope that the police will do a very thorough job. But, you know, what we know about this slaughterhouse in particular in Burlington, Ontario, it's called Fearman's Pork Incorporated. And there have been many incidents where truck drivers have tried to run into activists over the years. Um, no one has been seriously injured, thankfully, or killed until now, unfortunately. Um, but this is not the first time. And the government was repeatedly warned that a bill trying to outlaw these activities would only serve to increase tensions between animal advocates and the farm industry. And tragically, what we're seeing just two days after the bill passed is already somebody has lost their life. Do you think that that's a coincidence? You know, it's very difficult to say what the driver intended. The police are looking into that. But I think uh, it's fair to say that the meat industry has felt probably emboldened by this legislation and that that may manifest itself in a variety of ways. So one thing the legislation does is it actually explicitly gives police powers to farmers to arrest people that they believe have violated the, the provisions of the bill, who might be doing an investigation as an employee or who might be um, engaged in safe movement activities. The bill also gives an exemption from civil liability to um, a farmer or a trucker uh, with regards to their actions towards someone who might be violating the legislation. So that's- right, that's what I'm saying. Like this, that's why, you know, I do, I practice a lot of personal injury law and you, you know, if she, if they're going to place her at fault, recovery civilly is almost impossible. So there's a criminal investigation potentially. And then there's also civil liability and the ability to recover when a, a law or a bill like 156 is put into a, into effect, which I understand it's not in effect yet, but when it's put into effect, that's a problem. Um, because it's criminalizing those that are trying to be law abiding citizens and stand up for justice. So what can we do in the animal? What can we do in the vegan movement and in the animal rights movement to help repeal Bill 156? Well, you, you make a good point, which is that the bill seeks to outlaw lawful protest, which is one of the most fundamental rights that we have in the society is to express ourselves 
and especially express disagreement with industries like the meat industry that so horrifically abuse animals and government policies that tried to cover that up. And the vigil that Regan was attending when she was killed was a vigil in protest of Bill 156, as well as in protest of those conditions that the pigs are under. So uh, Animal Justice, my organization, we're a team of lawyers. We fight for legal rights for animals and uh, rights for the advocates who defend animals. And we are planning to challenge this bill in court because we believe it's unconstitutional. It is Justice unconstitutional. I mean, I don't, I'm, I don't know laws in Canada, but I know laws in the United States. And I know that here we have the First Amendment right to freedom of speech and right to freedom of assembly. And I don't know what your constitution says, but there's no way that that's constitutional. It's a fundamental right. Exactly, Carissa. We have the same rights in Canada and those are very cherished rights. They're some of the most important constitutional rights that anyone has. And so when the government undermines people's rights in this way, which ultimately undermines the rights of animals, uh, we're committed to stepping in and challenging it. And just as U.S. lawyers have challenged a gay laws now in Idaho, Utah, mm -hmm. North Carolina, uh, Kansas, and Iowa successfully, we believe this law will fall in Ontario as well. Mm -hmm. So you think you'll be successful in repealing it? I, I certainly hope so, because the stakes are too high. Um, this affects not only the rights of human beings who are speaking out, of an, uh, out on behalf of animals, but it affects also the animals, of course, who are the victims of this horrific industry, the meat industry, the egg industry, the dairy industry that keep them behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. And without people there speaking out on their behalf during transport, without undercover exposés into the conditions that they're kept in, the public just never gets a glimpse of their lives. Mm -hmm. Right. And especially with um, what happened with um, the protester who was peacefully standing there getting violently killed two days after the bill went into effect, I think that that should be considered heavily in any repeal. Is there anything that, that the community can do who are not, you know, in your jurisdiction to help repeal Bill 156? Is there anything we can do? Sure. Well, we, we have launched a petition in Regan's honor asking for a repeal of Bill 156 um, and also demanding that the government introduce animal protection laws for animals on farms because none currently exist. There's just no animal welfare regulations. And it's a legal vacuum where farmers get to make up their rules. So in Reagan's honor, you can visit our website, animaljustice.ca, to sign that. Okay. And I saw after this um, happened that there was a request to have the pigs that were being sent to slaughter to be rescued. Do we have any follow-up on that? Did that happen or were they sent to slaughter? Do we know? You know, it's one of the most tragic things about the situation is that it was like her life's work trying to protect those animals. She was run down by a truck full of pigs who themselves are going to be killed shortly. And um, not long after, so the truck, I got there on the scene, the truck is sitting there with the pigs still on it. The slaughterhouse loaded them onto another truck and brought them into the slaughterhouse and presumably killed them. Um, mm -hmm. All requests from animal advocates to rescue some of those pigs and take, take them to a sanctuary in her name were rejected. And probably already by now, people are eating bacon that came from the bodies of the pigs inside the truck that killed Reagan Russell. It is tragic on so many levels. Yeah, that's really tragic. I was hoping that those pigs would at least be saved in her honor um, because she stood there and literally was standing there, standing for justice when she was run over and dragged in her pursuit to stand for justice peacefully. I don't know what else to say. It's a horrific story. I know when I read it, I had tears in my eyes and um, I can only imagine what it was like to go to, on scene and arrive um, right after it happened. Must have been it heartbreaking. Was a really, really tough day, I think, for everyone. She was, she was loved by many, um, but it also cut so deeply into the Toronto animal advocacy community because not only is she missed and beloved, but it's political. Uh, the context in which this legislation has come and then we see her death, it's hard to ignore. So it's especially hurtful. Yeah, we really shouldn't ignore it. And this, the animal rights community and the vegan community should really step up right now and not let her die in vain, keep her name going. Um, she really stood for a lot of wonderful things that we stand for globally. So uh, I hope Bill 156 can get repealed. I hope um, our listeners will go to your website. What's your website again? To it's go sign the petition? Animaljustice.ca. So go there, sign the petition, and please let us know if there's anything that we can do to help um, with Bill 156. I'm a lawyer too, but I'm in Florida. I don't know how I can help you, but you know, let me know if there's anything I can do. So thanks, Camille.
Thanks, Carissa. It was good to be with you. All right, so next we're gonna continue our conversation where we left off last week. Um, we have been, this is our third week discussing how vegans are in defense and should be in defense of Black Lives Matter. Vegans as a community need to be standing up for justice like Reagan Russell was doing um, when she was brutally killed. As a whole and as a community, we must stand for justice. So we're gonna continue our conversation and where we left off last week because we just ran out of time and every week we seem to continue to run out of time. So I'm gonna start first with uh, Gwenna Hunter. Gwenna, welcome back. Hey, welcome back. <laughs> So I like starting with you because um, for those of uh, for those that have missed uh, previous episodes, um, Gwena founded Vegans for Black Lives Matter. It was an overnight sensation Facebook group, and it is exploding in requests to get admitted. So I feel like you can you're the best one to give us the weekly rundown of what's what are the updates, what's going on in the group. Well. Um you know, this past weekend, because um, I believe what happened with uh, Reagan happened on Friday. And so that was like a moment to pause. Like when I read that story, I couldn't believe it that this happened while she was out actually protesting and standing up for animals and that she was dragged. I'm like, what a stuff like she's advocating for oppression and suffering and that's exactly what happened to her mm -hmm. and for people to witness that and to, i heard that they heard her screaming and that the truck sped up and i've seen that um here in la uh, when it first started i used to go to pig vigils every sunday or the days of change where i used to go every single week and before we got our protections in place um it was a little rowdy and sometimes the trucks would speed up or they would honk their horns. And so that would be very scary when they would speed up because those trucks are powerful. And so just to know that she had to die that way was just really sad. And you could just and gruesome. feel the way. Oh, God. It was, it was, I saw that they were cleaning up the mess immediately after to try to, you know, cover oh how goodness. gruesome it was with the hoses. Mm -hmm. And I mean, she was literally dragged. I, uh, the, the truck didn't stop. Uh, and it's hard to believe he didn't know that he hit her and that he'd keep going. I have a hard time believing that as well. Um, I guess we have to speak in alleged terms, but yeah, I have a very yeah. hard time believing that he didn't know that he hit an actual person. They're trained to be able to see things. And so just to believe that he didn't know that he had a, a real person. How can you not feel that? bump i mean how can you not feel that i don't know i just i don't know i don't buy it i don't buy it yeah and you know we're you and i are very spiritual so i'm a 1000 percent believer that even if you get away with something on this realm you never get yeah, away yeah. with it right so true, i have true. satisfaction always knowing justice is served no matter what the laws do here on this particular realm, you can't want run away from your mm -hmm. crimes. It's true. You can't run away from karmic consequences. There's a right. cosmic law and order. So, That's right. you know, and mm -hmm. I, and I actually think that what happened to her is consistent to what we've been talking about because it goes with, you know, justice for humanity at, at the hands of humanity. So whether it's yeah. racism, it's the hands of humanity that are committing these injustices, whether it's, Reagan um, Russell, who's standing there protesting for the animals, her life was taken at the hands of a human being. And same thing, by the way, right before this show on Jane Unchained, they were mm -hmm. going live about a meat boycott. And the meat boycott is not for the animals. It's because of the workers that are being killed because they're being forced to go to work, which is also a systemic racist Yes. racism issue but they're being yes. forced to go to work and they're dying and getting sick of coronavirus because it's these these meat packing plants are this are the epicenter of and hotbed of of the spread of the virus so that is another example of human yes. beings being put in a situation that is unjust or unjust at the hands of other human beings so it's 
it's crazy to me. I'm like, maybe it's going to take for some aliens to come down and create an attack and then we'll unite as an entire race. Like maybe that's what's going to have to be like, um, ha you know, they're going to have to set that up to where it looks like we're being attacked by aliens and then we'll be like, oh, I love you. <laughs> you know, you and I speak the same language because you know, you hear about this alien talk and, the, you know, oh, the greys and the, the different species of aliens. Lizards. And, <laughs> I mean, that might be what it takes, something from another world and another planet to come here. And then suddenly we're like, oh, my God, we're all one human race. We're, we're all, all we one. Got. Right, yeah. exactly. We're all we got. And that's like, we're it. How does, like, if you end up in a room with a bunch of people, and then there's a threat outside of that room, you come together to try to mm -hmm. figure out how to protect each other and how to protect yourselves. It's the same thing with this planet. We're one big on this ball together in space, traveling throughout the universe. You would yeah, think yeah. that that would make sense that we're family. I would think oh that, God. but I will, what do I, I know? I just, no, well, you know a lot. Here. You're leading them. <laughs> yeah, I know. I feel that way too sometimes. I, I just, I somehow just landed here on this planet. I'm not sure what's going on or how to fix it, but you are leading a movement, right? And right now you're in a really important role. Like, you know, you're in a role of trying to lead a movement for justice and you are touching on very sensitive subjects that are difficult to touch upon because it's so easy to mince words and yeah. you're running a Facebook group where probably a lot of the people that are there mean, well, I'm not monitoring it like you are. So correct me if I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. I would think that the people that are part of the group mean well and are well-intentioned and yeah. probably not those that need to be attacked, but they might say something that, will then trigger someone else to then go into an attack mode because it does run so deep and systemically. I watched you put on the Facebook group um, the the video. It was Tulsa, right? Yeah. Yeah, I watched that. I didn't know about that. I mean, why don't you yeah. tell us about that? And let's get Jasmine up to discuss that too because I saw she's been pretty active. Hi, Jasmine. Jasmine Hi. from Internal <laughs> Being. Back. If you haven't seen her documentary, you must go watch it. Um, yeah, so Gwenna, tell us about the, you know, I, I watched that video in its entirety. I didn't know anything about that, to be honest. Yeah. I didn't know about it, but I'm not a history buff, so it might not be the, the barometer, but, you know, why don't you tell it, us about that? You know, honestly, I'm not a history, I, I despise history um, <laughs> as a kid because all I learned about um, was about conquering and taking territory. And even as a kid, I'm like, well, that's not nice. You took somebody's land. So I never, ever liked history. I, I would get anxiety having to take <laughs> tests. Like seriously, I would get anxiety because I wouldn't study it. I just did not like it. So um, I didn't learn about Tulsa until I was an adult, I have to say, until um, I was a grown adult. And it was another uh, person of color that shared it with me. And I'm like, what? So, um, so yeah, it was Black Wall Street. And you know how they have that saying like, you know what, Black people just pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Yeah, well, I would have known what? what Black we Wall Street is. I didn't even know, <laughs> I, I had not until, I mean, for me, that was an eye-opening video. And it actually bothered me at the end when I forgot his name, the the senator or the representative um, mm -hmm. who, who felt like, Basically, the history should, the past should just stay in the past. And um, he didn't really have any solution that I felt was fair. I didn't well, like his response at all. Well, yeah, he probably deep down was rooting for it. You know, like it probably wasn't anything that. Like there should be him. like a fund or something set up for scholarships or so, you know, for education, for, for those that are descendants of the families that had their property and their ability to live um, abundantly taken away from them. There should be some kind of fund set up for at least those to get equal, get back on equal footing. Yeah. With education or, you know, I mean, is it, and it hasn't been rebuilt, right? That area. No, it's never been what it was. And like I was saying, that was, 
you know, a time in history where black people pulled themselves up by their bootstraps. They did it independently. They did it amazingly. I saw some footage um, that some that a filmmaker, a black filmmaker did during that time. And just looking at their beauty and the way they stood and they were proud and you didn't see or feel any fear and the way they were dressed. And I was told there were like 35 like supermarkets like in that area, um, all these different types of uh, stores and they were all thriving, all mm -hmm. thriving. And, you know, I'm not a, a buff on that. So I don't know, I don't want to throw this on Jasmine, but I don't have a whole lot of information. <laughs> Jasmine, like, yeah, oh, let's throw it on Jasmine. Let's toss it. Go on, Jasmine. Jump no, in. Uh, you know, <laughs> Carissa, what you said that I thought was kind of spot on, you said, well, you asked a question, like they didn't rebuild it. And I think that is the fundamental, um, that's what's missing from everything. Like when you destroy something, you know, if I destroy somebody's property, I'm responsible for damages. If I mm -hmm. steal something from someone, I don't get to keep it. I have mm -hmm. to return it. And any profit mm -hmm. I made from it is turned over, you know? And I think with us now, you have people, even they're willing to admit it, they're willing to admit like, oh yeah, there is a generational wealth gap because we allowed, you know, white people to own property and didn't allow black people to own property, which now affects our generation. They'll admit to it, but they don't want to fix it. All these and that's a problem. Cotton industries, tobacco industries. It's like you built that on slave labor. Like you yeah. built your empire from illegal actions that hurt all these people. It, you yeah. don't just get to, okay, we're going to stop doing that now. And you get to keep all the millions or billions of dollars you made and have to pay no restitution for all of the things that you destroyed. And I think yeah. that's, you know, the... That's why yeah. it's so hard for us to move forward because we were, our house was burned to the ground and no one said, okay, let's make a real effort to build it back up. Right. And in the eyes of the law, it's all about when you said restitution, it's about being made whole. It's yeah. about having the opportunity to be made whole. That's what restitution is. And it's, it hasn't been rebuilt. I don't get it. And there seems to be no efforts to be making anyone whole it just seems to be more of an acknowledgement of okay yes this did happen this did go down it shouldn't have go down we're kind of sorry about it but not sorry enough to do anything well mm -hmm. look what they do to the to native american land how they will you know we the whole world watch standing rock we all watch them get like beat um holes all types of things and this is their land like you talk about them having reparations, you know, and I just recently learned um, from someone that's Native American that all the, the um, agreements that have been made for them to get their land and have it restored, like it gets broken every single time. And so, you know, as Black Lives Matter is rising up, y'all need to rise up with us because mm -hmm. what has happened with them is even just as bad. Like they were living here peacefully and were just had their land taken and they're still being bullied. But that seems land. to be the theme, isn't it? I mean, look, just that seems theme. to be the theme. Those that are peaceful are mm -hmm. getting bullied. Even look at Reagan Russell. She's standing there peacefully and the big guy on the truck with the motor and the semi that's, you know, much bigger than her just drove right over her. I mean, that is so metaphorically what's going on here yeah. on so many levels. It's like she was literally standing there as a vegan, standing for justice with a mm -hmm. sign, peacefully mm -hmm. protesting, which she has a constitutional right to do no matter yes. where you are in the world. That's a fundamental right. Freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, and oh, because the truck driver didn't agree with it, and because a bill just passed, Bill 156, saying it's illegal to basically protest in front of a slaughterhouse if you're in any way obstructing the way of the truck into the take the pigs for slaughter. So they have now criminalized her, even though that bill's not in effect. They have criminalized the victim, which is what yes. has happened with racism, which yes. is what has happened with 
the Native Americans that you just talked about. And this is a systematic injustice with our planet. And I think you're right, Gwenna. I don't know if the solution is to just drop aliens down because <laughs> I don't know. Seriously, when is humanity going to get it? When is yeah, humanity going to get it? I mean, we're here on an animal network for the animals. We're all vegans. We care. We understand humanity. I think all of us here, it's like we, you know, we're, we're on the same page that we have a circle of compassion that extends beyond us. But if we cannot get it for our own kind, we have a serious problem because we will never get it as a planet for the animals. Well, this planet is being ran by bullies. Yeah. That's how this planet gets ran, being ran. Like, I, I, I cannot remember. I read it late last night as I was falling asleep. You may know, Carissa, but apparently um, the current leader in charge passed some type of law where if you um, knock down a statue, I don't know if it was for, I can't remember who it was for because I have read it. It's like up to 10 years in prison. It's like, oh, you had the time to create that law to protect a freaking a statue? statue? I didn't know about but that. But yet. Like, yeah, that's profound. Like, wow wow and you have followers wow like it just it's that's all i got to say on that one that was a bit mind-blowing when i when i read I that i didn't even know about that so when did that law go into effect this just happened i'm gonna have to because i have looked at it last night and i was like falling asleep i'm gonna see if i could pull it up right now okay is it a law or is this something that they're trying to pass has it already passed i think he passed it i'm gonna just pull it up really quick Jeez, um wow but even if it's not he's working on it which is yeah. still crazy yeah um here, will you pull that up? I we have. Well, let me bring Janelle. Janelle's been here. Um, oh, hi, Janelle. And, hi, Janelle. Hi, everyone. Hi. How you um, doing? Nice yeah. to see you again. I know we missed you last week. Yes, I was. Yeah. Um, my kids and I had a couple days off of break. I had to kind of force Genesis to take a little break because she needed one, but she works hard. So oh, she got to go to <laughs> camping for a week and I went with them for a few days. So <laughs> oh, okay. Nice. And if anyone's watching the show who's a non-vegan and doesn't know who Genesis is, uh, Genesis is Janelle's daughter and she's a Marvel superhero and one of the youngest people, if not the youngest person to ever give a TED talk, right? Yeah, she was the youngest and someone that she did it when she was 10, but someone who was nine just did one. So she got oh. bumped off, but that's okay. She's, she's still <laughs> she's still a superhero, though. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. So um, okay, is there anything you want to? Oh, okay, good. You want to go on screen share if you found and it? I want to add something to the conversation, too. So, yeah. you know, just because, you know, because we're discussing, um, we're discussing um, Reagan Russell in the same conversation with Black Lives Matter, right? So me as a black woman, you know, that can get complicated, you know, because yeah. people have a certain way of looking at things. So I do want to differentiate um, saying that, yes, you know, it's they're both crimes against humanity, right? In one situation, you have a woman who's going up against um, kind of a government sanctioned process. So that's one problem. Yeah. With the Black Lives Matter movement, you're having people who are getting killed for sitting at home in their beds eating dinner. They're yeah. getting killed just because like they are black, you know, they're getting killed for their skin color, which is right. a different, which is a different thing, both grotesque, but I did just want to make the distinction. Yeah, no, that's a good that's distinction and a good point. Um that's a good point. The problem is humanity really needs some help. I see um, Ari Nesh, Birdie. Hi. I see you oh nodding my. vehemently <laughs> on that comment. So I wanted to bring you on there. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself first and your business, because I was reading on it online last night and I was really touched by everything that you're doing. I don't know. If, do you know everyone on the screen? Have you guys ever met? We I know Jasmine Gwenna. Of course, I know Genesis and Janelle, but I haven't met. Nice to meet you, Janelle. I love you and your daughter. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So tell us about your business and what you're doing, and then and then you can comment because you were very very much nodding to what Jasmine <laughs> was saying. Yeah. Um, so I um, am the founder and executive director of an organization called Encompass, and we're working to bring racial diversity, equity, and inclusion to the animal protection movement. Um, we're actually a nonprofit, but we do do consulting work with 
um, animal groups, predominantly white run and led groups to help them understand why racial equity is vital to our cause for animal protection and um, take steps to, to actualize that. And then we also work to support advocates of the global majority, which is a term that we're using instead of people of color um, to capture the, the breadth of the global movement that we are. Um, and we work on that front to support folks with leadership skills, training opportunities, personal resilience, community building, mentorship, um, that kind of thing. So yeah, I'm really excited to be here. Um, I do definitely want to center the black black voices in this room, so I'm happy to step back a bit. But I think everything that has been said is really um, is really spot on. And I think, as Jasmine was saying, um, there is a distinction. I think we need to be careful as we talk about um, this tragedy that just happened. And of course, it feels so fresh and it feels so unjust. And at the same time the injustice that we see happening in the murder of black folks has been happening for 400 years in this country and, you know, millennia yeah. before that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think one's more systemic and the other one is more of a horrific crime that we just witnessed. Um, yeah. I saw you nodding though. <laughs> if, um, if you don't um, mind, Chris, I just wanted to add to what Gwenda was saying. I'm actually native American. I'm half native American. Um, my father is Apache and um, it's crazy, you know, because all the treaties have been broken and people believe that because um, I'm native, we get money or we're taken care of or because the casinos, you know, they think, oh, you must get money. I wish I got some money, but I'm not part of the tribe. You have to be part of the tribe. Um, and there's very, very few people who get that money who are Native American. So um, and. The government allowed us to get funding if we're Native American, but they also made us burn all our documents to prove that we're Native American. Um, so if my family wasn't made to burn their documents, I could have, you know, I'm trying to get my doctorate right now. I could have got that paid for. I could have got my master's paid for. I could have got my bachelor's paid for. I could have got free health care for myself and the entire family, um, but I can't because we don't have documents. And I went through a point in my life where I was really, really angry and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it, I, you know, these documents. But then I realized I might not be here today if my parent, my, not my parents, but my ancestors didn't get rid of our documents to prove that we were Apache because we were the most sought after tribe to be killed because we were the, you know, the, the most warrior out of all of them, you know, just we, we fought back. A lot of them did, but Apaches were the ones that, that went hard. They, <laughs> they did not hold back. So I can understand um, why, but I just wanted to add that, you know, so even my children who are black, you know, they would have, they were a quarter Apache, um, they would have been taken care of, but because of the government, you know, making us burn our documents so that we wouldn't die, uh, we, you know, I have to basically have to fend for ourselves when it comes to healthcare and everything that should have been provided to us. Mm -hmm. And how is Genesis uh, dialogue and rhetoric developing um, throughout this, I mean, she's still kind of a baby, you know, and she's wise beyond her years and be, uh, you know, a great voice for the animal Thank you. animals, but how is her voice developing uh, with racism and well, human injustice at the hands of humans? Yeah, she just did a um, uh, the fake movement with Gwenna. She did a um, BLM conversation. And I was blown away. I was in the other room because that's the first time she took part in a panel. And I'm like, is that my baby girl? Like, oh my gosh, like I know she she's wise, but some of the stuff she said, you know, and Gwenna can attest to it, you know, yeah. her biggest point from it was fear that people are no longer fear, you know, fearful and fear is what holds us back. And she actually learned that from uh, my uncle Cesar Chavez uh, when she filmed a documentary about his life. Um, if anyone doesn't know who he is, he's one of the you know greatest civil rights movement leaders um, in history in the United States. And uh, when we went to film the documentary, my cousin told Genesis, he goes, I just want you to know, this was when she was like eight years old. He was like, do not be afraid. You know, there's gonna be people that are gonna try to make you you know, be fearful of what you're doing. But as long as you know what you're doing is right, like don't ever be afraid because you're mm -hmm. not gonna be able to achieve what you want if you live in fear, you know? And he said, Cesar Chavez was always met at protests with guns and he had assassins trying to kill him. And mm -hmm. uh, just, you know, even his dog, uh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, when did her awareness develop? I mean, she obviously developed an awareness at a very young age for the animals, but when did it develop for herself that my God, you know, I'm I'm in this group that's systemically discriminated against. Like, when did that um, develop? 
I think it began in middle, I mean, elementary school when she was in fourth grade. I discussed the last time I was on here how she witnessed a white child stab a black child in the heart with a pencil and yeah. that he wasn't yeah. punished. Um, I think that was mm. the catalyst. That's when she realized like, whoa, like what is going on? Like, why did that happen? And why did he not get in trouble? Um, and then she went to a school where it was predominantly white. So the white girls, um, they bullied her a lot. Um, and she didn't understand why and they would always put her down so she was like i don't need to go to school with this drama like this is nonsense like i'm trying to save the world the last thing i need is to deal with bullying um but she saw how they all ganged up on her because she didn't conform to the way they dress the way they talk the way they look um and there's a few other minority girls that were her best friends that conformed and she didn't so they like all just ganged up on her and she was like uh-uh this is not cool so um, since then, and I think just, you know, watching the news and seeing people, you know, being killed, her own cousin was killed by the police when he was 18. He didn't resist arrest and he was killed and the police got away with it. This happened uh, about three years ago. Wow. Um, so she's slowly but surely, you know, she's just becoming more and more aware of the injustices. And that's why she is so adamant and so vocal about vegans being intersectional. And um, mm -hmm. luckily no one's come after her for it, I guess, because she's a kid, but she's passionate about it. And, you know, because of her background with Cesar Chavez and fighting for the planet and fighting for the animals and, and for humans, she saw, you know, at an early age that everyone and everything is connected. So you can't fight for one without, you know, being a voice for the others. So um, mm -hmm. I think that's, it's just been a process, but I'm really impressed. I wish I was that awake when I was her age, because I had no clue. <laughs> Yeah, no, she's awake. She is definitely awake. Um, and Gwenna, I'm sure that you two could probably have a valuable conversation regularly since you're both mm -hmm. leaders, leaders in a movement that has an intersection. I think, Janelle, what you just said is, the way you said it was very eloquent, um, that you can't be a voice for one without really being a voice for the other. You have to understand the intersection. So That's yes, absolutely right. And, and, you know, I always commend um, Janelle because she could have been the type of parent that's like, I don't want to hear it, that quiet, mm -hmm. keep, and we never know who Genesis was, you yeah. know? So I commend you for just allowing her to be herself because at that, when you're a child, that's when you are sprouting and you're pure and you become, you know what I mean? Like you become that human and to allow her to tell you we're going vegan, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, just, I commend you on that. I commend Thank you, you on that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, and as an educator, you know, that was always my biggest thing. When I have kids, I'm gonna teach them that they don't have to, you know, take what adults say for, you know, their word and say like, oh, this is true because an adult told me, I've always taught them, you can question authority or adults as long as you do it respectfully. Don't be a jerk about it, but as long yeah. as you come across, you know, like, <laughs> Don't, you don't have to be like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll do this because you said so. You know, if you question it, you know, you have questions asked. I just never thought she would question me. So at first I was like, oh, this backfired. <laughs> but now I'm like, I'm glad she did. So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So um, we're going to have next week, unfortunately, they canceled last minute this week um, from Season Vegan, the owners, um, Chef Brenda and Aaron Veneer they were in a construction zone and their audio wasn't working. So I hope next week we can continue a lot of these conversations because unfortunately last week, I felt like Chef B had some real valuable rhetoric and stories to tell that she witnessed firsthand. And unfortunately the broadcast had a technical difficulty and mid sense disconnected. And so I really wanted to continue that conversation today um, because it was so she raw and authentic. It was so <laughs> authentic what came from her, you know? And I yeah. think that uh, even even Paige called me after the show. Paige is uh, the booker for Jane and one of the executive producers for this network. And she said, you know, Carissa, maybe before the shows, you should get everyone talking ahead of time because it's like everyone needed to get their juices warmed up in a conversation yeah. because this, she's like, I don't know if people stayed tuned for the second half of the show, but the second half of the show was the best part because that's when everyone got real. Yeah. 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 No, I, I, I totally agree. She, she brought that heat and I'm like, well, shoot, let me bring some of my heat. You know, like it was, <laughs> yeah. Cause you know, we're being, we're trying to be poised on here and respectful of the show. But I think all of us have 
you know, a lot of pain that we would love to express and stories that have like, you know, that we're still probably haven't healed from a lot of situations. I shared a, a story in the group uh, when it first started, how I worked for a corporate corporation um, back in the early 90s when I lived in Cleveland. Um, and Cleveland, you know, I don't know how it still is now, but at that time, very racist. But because you grow up in that culture, you think that that's just how the world is and you don't, for me, I just accepted a lot of it unless it was extreme. So mm -hmm. I tolerated a lot of the racism. And I had a situation where I worked with um, a white lady that was around my age. And I brought a Christmas card to work and it had a black Santa Claus on it. And she looked at it and said, to start laughing. And because I, I was like kind of close to her, I'm laughing too. Like, oh my God, was girl, what you laughing at? You know, you both are laughing, you start laughing. And so I'm like laughing with her. And I'm like, what's so funny? And she's like, oh, a black Santa Claus. I'm like, yeah, why not? And she's like, well, you know, black people were created when Adam slept with an ape. And she started laughing even harder. My and God. literally I went into like a physical shock and just, cause I'm like, did she just say that? And she's laughing. And there were other black people that just stood there and turned around and walked away. And I work with, she was like, she was, I was an assistant manager, she was a manager. And anyway, make a long story short, um, it got to HR, they put it in her file. Um, she got like a write-up and I continued to work for her and she retaliated against me constantly. Like I got retaliated against and it was for about three months. Like I was just physically sick going to work physically sick at work because of just how my body was dealing with all this. And it wasn't like I could just quit and find another job. So I was just like, take it. It was, it was just a crazy time. If I was who I am now, I would have had Jesse Jackson up in there. Like we'd have been, it'd have been a different story, but because I just wasn't in my power and I felt helpless and just took it, you know, I, I, that's one of the times in my life, like, I don't really have regrets, but that's one where I'm like, oh, I wish I can go back to that and do that one one more time. But, um, yeah. Well, but I think that's key. It's finding your power sometimes and owning it. You know you have it inside of you, but it's it's owning it and being brave enough to own it sometimes. Yeah. Um, so, uh, John Lewis, Badass Vegan, thanks for joining us uh, on time. <laughs> So, yeah. email. I was like, wait, what? what? You need an assistant. <laughs> you need an assistant to go through your emails yeah. and your social media. It, it's really gotten worse since the whole re release of the trailer and everything. Now, like, I no, don't everybody know, wants you. I swear. Oh, why don't we? Can you can you put it on screen share the trailer release? Let's show everybody. Uh, pull, sure. Let's pull it. And Gwena, you were I pulling can, something up on screen here too. While I figure that out. You know how to use that technology? <laughs> I, I am, but I just wasn't ready. I just wasn't ready. <laughs> yeah. Well, mine was on another. I pulled mine up on the phone. It was just to verify that Trump is using um, a, old, a law, the Veterans Memorial Preservation Act, and he tweeted that anyone that vandalizes or destroys a monument um can get up to 10 years in prison so yeah he's enforcing that it's not a new one it's a, an old one that he's just gone he's going to enforce now so so basically battery is what it is if you commit a battery to a monument you can get 10 years in prison but if you yeah, and a lot of these monuments to a human being it's not clear cut. Said, aliens aliens yeah, are you can kill a human and you're good you can kill a human, you're good. But if you destroy a monument, we got a bad, problem. Bad. Did you know about that, John? I didn't no, know about I didn't, that. I didn't know about that one. That just... Yeah, he tweeted this on Tuesday morning. Jesus. See, I, I, that's the thing. His oh, it's tweet, a tweet. Like, and I follow him. I actually follow him because I want to see like what comes out of that. His thumbs. Like I just. I really <laughs> see. His thumbs. Yeah. Yeah, because I just. People are like, why do you follow meat eaters and this and that? I'm like, no, I want to see what they're talking about. Like, I first of all, I don't see why people are always worried about who other people follow. That's a that's a whole nother thing. I get messages all the time, like, 
why did you like this and why did you follow them? I'm like, no, nah, because like you gotta watch what I hate That's to say, right. it, you gotta watch what the enemy does too. That's right. You know That's right. Like if you don't, and, and then you want to act surprised when That's something right. else happens. So, um, okay, so screen share. All right. Yeah, let's do this? the trailer. Yeah. Tell it. Give the audience and yeah, but give give us a little uh, opening before you play okay, it. Okay. So uh, if anybody's seen what the health. Uh, I teamed up with Keegan Coon. This is the official follow-up film to What the Health. It's based off of food justice and social justice uh, through the lens of hip hop. And um, yeah, our, our previous name was Hungry for Justice. Jasmine, I think I told you before. Yeah, that was the title. So I we got. officially changed the name. We were going to change the name anyway. But we yeah, last show you wouldn't tell us what it was. What's the official <laughs> new name? They're trying to kill us. Oh, wow. Woo. Yeah. Um, you just keeping it all the way 100. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, we didn't even put out any, like, That was going to be the name since 2018. And then, but we just, the thing is, it's hard to get talent on a film when you're talking to their agents. You're like, yeah, we got this film called They're Trying to Kill Us. Can we get your, <laughs> we get your superstar on that? <laughs> it's a lot easier to go with Hunger for Justice. But it's funny, yeah. now with the title being the way it is and with everything that's going on, people don't care anymore. They're like, oh no, that's right. <laughs> like that's the way it's supposed to be. So yeah. Uh, okay, so screen okay. here. Yeah, let's so see. let's see the trailer that's being released. Boom. <clears throat> and then um I Arinesh, you didn't get to say much this show. Okay, I mean I'm happy to say <laughs> Something. You should feel free to jump in. Yes, please say something while I get this ready. Yeah, please say something while I get that ready. <laughs> okay, let's think. Well, um, I something that I'm I'm finding really interesting and I'm reading a lot about is why white folks are feeling this is the moment for them to step up and, and join Black Lives Matter protests. And um, I think it's just, I, I would like to see more introspection on that question because nothing is new. Nothing happening is new. I mean, this has been happening for, like I said, forever. So what is it about this moment that is encouraging white folks to speak out? I, I'm, I have some hypotheses, um, but that's something that I think I would like to see more introspection and, and, and comments about, because I'm seeing so much we stand in solidarity with, but what's next? What happens when this moment of anger dies down? What happens when when Trump is inevitably out of office, whether it's this year or next, you know, four years, are we are we going to keep this momentum up? Are we going to keep fighting for these issues? Um, and I think that 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 question can only get answered when we understand why white folks are are feeling that this is a moment worth taking action over. So I don't know, just just a question that I'm that I'm that I'm struggling with, and curious to hear others. You know what? It's yeah. funny because for me, this time hit differently. Because it was the, the whole, this was the first time you see someone dying over the course of almost nine minutes. You know, with the other situations, you know, it wasn't it wasn't taped, so there was always room for question, like, "Oh, what did that guy do that might have provoked this?" But here, we just saw someone being killed over nine minutes. You saw him crying and begging for his mother. Like there was something so powerful about this visual that showed you like, no, there's no, there's no argument. This was just messed up, you know? But Eric Garner died the same way and, you know, saying the same exact things. And we have so many, you know, examples of people, black people running, different people just doing their own things. And yes, maybe we don't have the body cam footage for all of those, um, but I, I'm going to hear you. I agree. It did it's hearing him. Yeah. Say mama, like there's no way that you can hear that and not cry. Um, but there are I there think so many examples throughout history and we're, I mean, we're seeing companies like Walmart say black lives matter, <laughs> you know, like that didn't happen even two months ago. So there is something that's really shifting in the consciousness, and I want to yeah. I want to hold those folks accountable in the future. I want to hold um, people to these words, and I want action to happen, and I want things to actually change. I don't want it to be short lived. I don't want it to be, you know, mm -hmm. just a moment. I guess that's that's yeah. my 
And I think without well, I think introduction, it's easy to have that mm -hmm. just kind of move forward. Yeah, I think one thing Jasmine said last week that was really profound that stuck with me is I'm not trending. Like this is not an issue that's trending. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty powerful. It's like, all right, I get that this is newsy now. I get that this is the headlines now because of this incident that we all caught on camera now. But this is not an issue that's trending. This is something that, you know, is here to stay and needs to be resolved. Uh, John, I feel comfortable doing this show, honestly, is because Jane and Shane Page, you know, they booked me long before this happened. You know, it was like they were, you know, they were dealing with me before this. So I know it's not like, oh, we want to get her so we don't look racist. We want to get on the Black Lives Matter movement um, cosmetically, but not behind the scenes. Like they were trying to incorporate people of color well before this event happened. And I appreciate that. And that's why I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent point. Yeah. John, did you figure it out? I think it's ready. I think. Okay. I think, I think Let's we're put it up because we're running out of time. You got it? Okay. All right. Ready? Let's go. Uh, tell me, can y'all see this now? Does it show no. the trailer? No. No. You're not on screen share. We hear it. This is the neighborhood I grew up in, right in Ferguson. Friend of mine. No, nope, can't shot. see anything. Well, it said screen save to. Are you not on the right tab, maybe? This is the tab. Yeah, this is crazy. Uh, sharing stream yard to streamyard.com. Is there a. Oh, maybe if I give you the link. Somebody give me the link. Give me the link. I'll try to do it. I'll put there it up. There we go. See? Where's I the link? Have some weaknesses. I'll just share it. <laughs> put the link in the comments so everyone can see it themselves later, too. There you go. Not private chat. Oh well, it's not letting me. It's not letting me uh, comment on. All right, all right. Live right. chat. I don't. I don't have that. That privilege. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I see it. Should I try? Yeah. I just got in the private chat. So. Um. Here. Okay. <clears throat> Good. It's not just me. <laughs> All right. Can you see my screen? There we go. Yeah, yep. we can see it. Okay. Let me make it full screen. Here we go. Well, you're full screen, definitely. See, it's not just me. I feel so much better now. Thank you. <laughs> it was on there. It was on there. That's interesting. You can't see it? No. 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 Hmm. Say, by the way. <laughs> but we saw it at one point. Yeah. Wait a minute. Here we go. There we go. I think now you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> I can see a whole bunch of screens. There All right. Here, Here we, we go. go. Make the screen bigger if you can. Now there's no sound. All right, I give up. <laughs> what me? All right. Appreciate everybody. Check out my page. You can go see. I guess we we'll need to learn how to do this for next. Let's do this next week. Yeah. Does that sound great, John? Like that great. show up on time and we'll do, we'll start the show off next week with them. Um, we'll have seasoned vegan back. Um we can continue the conversation. You're all welcome. Um, Ari Nesh, I don't feel like you spoke enough, and I felt like you had very valuable things to say. Um, but we are so out of time. And let me see. We have 10 comments here. Let's see if there's anything. Yes, can we share the link? Here's the link, everyone, on comments. There you go. So it's on comments. Can you share oh, this? It's in there. Yeah, um. I, it's there. I shared the link. And so people can watch it. But we'll definitely... Put it up on the screen next next show um thank you guys so much for joining us i have to uh end the show with another thing every week we have a certified vegan product by bveg my company that we feature um this week we have oh bye john <laughs> uh this week we have a, a brand that is um, part of a grocery chain so uh 
I'm going to bring them up, but let's please have this conversation next week because this is super important stuff and an hour is just not enough time to discuss and to let everyone talk about it, especially Gwenna with what you are moderating on a daily basis with um, the Facebook group. I think that this is a perfect opportunity to have a dialogue to have a conversation to get to solutions in some way that's very open, honest, and safe. And I think that we need to make it make a safe environment for people to talk. So um, thank you guys so much for joining and thanks for having us on. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>
this was an ad here. This was an interesting item because it's very relatively expensive. And when we first introduced it, we thought it'll be like, you know, somewhere on the back end of the line. But okay. oh good. But it actually has become <laughs> one of one of our better products. So uh, one of our best products. It's interesting that people are really gravitating towards avocado oil as opposed to all those other bad oils that people have been using for years. Try to avoid right, right. canola, people. <laughs> <laughs> Canola's bad, yeah. soy's bad, a lot of the oils are bad. They're just not healthy for you. They're GMOs. And, um, right. Yes, yeah, so we have yeah. a vegan thing on the back of it, yeah. Yeah, so when will the products be printed with the vegan label? Uh, that container is here. Let's see. Uh, I don't think yeah, I got the that one I'm in holding the mail. in my hand came out of the container and it, I don't know if you can see it. How do I get it closer to the camera? <laughs> anyway, it has the vegan label on it. That's your label. Yeah, so, on it. so yeah, so oh, and if anyone's listening and they have a vegan product and want to get certified vegan um, by Be Veg, they can go to the Jane Unchained website. Here it is. Uh, here's her logo. Have a vegan product. Click here, and if you certify through this link, 100% of your certification fee will go to Jane Unchained News Network for the animals. So we can continue covering important issues. Um, I also got in the mail. I don't know if you sent me avocado oil. I'll have to check. But we got a couple different. You also have wines and um, like this one. That's grape juice. Okay, so that oh, this one's grape juice. Wait, no, here's the wines. We have the we have wines and grape juice. Yeah. So the wines are organic. They come from a, the winery is extremely interesting. It's been around for eight hundred and something years, and now at this point in time, they are one hundred percent kosher and one hundred percent organic which is interesting because they're not owned by Jewish people. Uh, but the um, the wines are wonderful. Oh, yes. Pomegranate? Yes, and raspberry. Vinegar. How do we eat this or drink and, this or what do we do with this? Put it in uh, salads or? You've got a pomegranate. I'm holding the raspberry. Uh, they're different. Yeah. <laughs> we have both. So these are interesting because there's no sugars or anything that adulterates these things. They're just um, raspberry vinegar and raspberry juice and pomegranate vinegar and pomegranate juice. You have salads are the best way. The raspberry is so good, you don't even need to add anything else to it. You just pour it on the salad. We yeah, have a lot of I'm different a, products. So what do you do? Do you mix the avocado oil with the vinegar for a salad? But that do you would have a be salad good. dressing? Do you have a salad dressing recipe you could give us to post? Sure. <laughs> yeah. We do. We have a number of them. We have a, you know, because we have organic balsamic vinegar as well, and we have dressings that use that. Uh, we have red wine vinegar. We have eleven different, eleven different organic vinegars in the line. Which I'm gonna have to try them all. Okay, well, I don't know what we sent you. I'll have to look at the list. But uh, <laughs> I see pomegranate, maybe a raspberry. I think I have over there, but I don't want to get up. Um, I don't know if I got any of those avocado oils though. Okay, well, we can certainly send see. it to you. Like I said, the right, avocado yeah. oil, it's it, it become our number one seller. It's very really? interesting. And it's well, not a cheap oil. So it means that people are beginning to become aware of that you are what you eat. And what you eat matters. And it affects your health. And again, when you go back to this whole idea of vegan, if you're eating animals that have been tortured and have not been treated nicely, you're eating negative energy. Yep, you're eating yeah. fear. You're yeah. ingesting but, fear and pain correct. and suffering and hormones. That that then build antibodies, which means we can't fight pandemics. We can't get vaccines that that right. we're not resistant All to. All those and things that you shouldn't yeah. have. I mean, it's not like when you sit there and you think of an idyllic little cow under a pretty tree up a hill. That's not what this is anymore. I wish it was, but you're you're looking at animals that have been tortured. Right? Yeah. And who wants to eat a tortured animal? Well. Yeah. I got to say, I mean, did you know the story that we started the show with about Reagan Russell, the animal activist that was standing outside the slaughterhouse in uh, Canada uh, holding a sign peacefully that was run down by a semi truck full of pigs to slaughter? I did not. I didn't yeah. know anything about that. I, this, I mean, right. Yeah. I mean, that's again, that's because people people just want to make money. They don't care how. They don't care what they do to make it. So if you get in their way, they run you over. Uh, yes, yeah. seriously, yeah. literally. Seriously. Yeah. If you yeah. stand literally. up for justice, if you—that's a good way to end the show. If you literally stand for justice, you can almost expect humanity to run you over. 
the status quo doesn't want anything to change. Yeah, so here we, this was your- uh, Oh, very nice. <laughs> avocado oil. And let's see if I have any more. I have a bunch of wines here I'll have to try. Um, and for uh, those that are interested in vegan wine, we have a free app at BevEg. You can download it, it's B-E-V-V-E-G, and it um, catalogs over a million beverages around the world and has the certified vegan ones um, that can be filtered, which is important because um, a lot of people don't know, they think that wine beer and liqueur is vegan, but the truth is, is that often it is filtered through animal parts, uh, whether that's cow's elbows and knees, gelatin, eyes and glass, uh, which is fish bladder, egg whites, horse hooves, um, or a sugar component that has a bone char. There are over 60 ingredients that could go into making your wine and the Tobacco and Trade Bureau admits this, but that yet there are still zero disclosure requirements on the bottle except for alcohol content. So it's very important if you're a vegan and you wanna know if your wine is uh, vegan or in your case, you also have kosher symbols here. Um, you really, the, what goes into these bottles is trade secret and you don't really know what's going into 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 it so it's so important to look for the labels to look for the certification to know it's something that you can trust and i see that you here at della rosa are very good at marking your certifications on these bottles you have more you have more content here than most wines have you even have information about the the flavor and the layers and the flowery and exotic exhibits great balance combining different red and black fruits perfect with asian cuisine and gives you all sorts of advice. So, um, right, so the wines, the Rosa wines, dot com. kosher wine .com Oh, we can't hear you. We lost kosher. your audio. Well, I did. Yeah. yeah. Kosher wine.com. Yeah. 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 You can hear me now. Lost your audio. I can't hear you. Oh, well, but, um, yeah. Oh, well, so <laughs> anyway, these are delicious products. There's the vegan logo. They are carried in stores across the United States and online and on Amazon. So again, if you would like to um, know more about vegan certification, get certified vegan, go to janeunchained.com, click here, go through her website and all the funds will go to Jane Unchained nonprofit so we can continue reporting on the laws that matter. So I wanted to give everyone a big thank you for joining us this week. We will be back again next week on Wednesday and I really want to dedicate this show in loving memory of Reagan Russell. Um, so unfair what happens and may Bill 156 be repealed and may such crimes never happen again. But thanks for joining us and see you next week.